put CB0301 at the bottom of the food chain when it comes to androgen receptor affinity. Today we are going to take a look at a new brand and compound named CB0301. This is actually the first compound that is a topical anti-androgen solution that is going to get and has gotten the FDA approval. So currently CB is going under two brand names named Brisula and Glascotarone and is currently used as a topical anti-androgen solution for the skin and scalp. This means that it's primarily used for women at this point. When women usually have some acne or something else like that, it's actually the same reason why most of us guys lose our hair. It's because of the androgen receptor activation. So by using an anti-androgen topical solution like Brasula or Clascotarone, they can actually inhibit the androgen response, just like we want to do with our hair follicles. So for any one of you guys who have any concerns about using IU58841, that is my personal favorite, you could take a look at this CB0301 instead, since it has the FDA approval stamp or whatever you would call it. And if this makes you feel any kind of safer using an anti-androgen, well, I suggest you go and take a look at it. So at this point, let's go and take a look at the pharmacodynamics of this compound. First off, so CB is an androgen receptor antagonist. This means that it's going to bind and compete at the androgen receptor uh, against compounds like testosterone or dihydrotestosterone, also named DHT. If you don't know what these kind of hormones is, I suggest you take a look at some of my other videos where I explain why they are the main reasons to men's hair loss. So primarily what it does is that it binds to the androgen receptor instead of the biological target, mainly testosterone or DHT, dihydrotestosterone. And in this way, it's going to inhibit the response that is going to happen in your scalp. In a bioassay, the potency of this topical agent was greater than progesterone, finasteride, and flutamide. Likewise, this compound is significantly more efficacious as an anti-androgen than other AR antagonists, such as insalutamide and spironolactone in the scalp. Since this is an FDA approved medical treatment, there's first off way more human studies done. At this point, there's way more clinical trials done. There's more testing done. This means for you who has any safety concerns, this has a way higher safety profile for you guys with concerns. Or if you have had any kind of negative response to other treatments, this is a way more tested kind of treatment. It is safer than IU58841 on paper. Okay, so IU58841 is just not tested. We don't know if it's even safer or worse than CB. We just know how safe CB is and it's safe enough for the FDA to approve of this drug at this point. So guys, the most important thing we want to look at is of course, how effective is CB0301 in reality? Now, what I want to do is compare it to the other topical anti-androgen I'm using, namely IU58841. And I will oversee stuff like half-life, metabolite, how it's going to affect other parts of the body and just look at the receptor affinity so first off, if you don't know what receptor affinity is, it is how much likely the receptor is going to stick with this compound instead of any other things. So if you have a low receptor affinity, it's not going to work very well. And if it's super high, it's going to work very well. So if we take a look at CB's receptor affinity for the androgen receptor, it is 100 fold less than the androgen hormone DHT. 
Now this means that it is, it's going to be 100 times less effective than your natural hormone DHT. This actually means that DHT is going to bind to the receptors most of the time and in some of the times CB is going to bind to the receptor and block out DHT. Of course, guys, there's, there's a lot of factors going to play around here, like the saturation dose, the time you're on the drug, other factors going as well. And so you know how strong and effective this compound is. Now, compared to the CB, let's take a look at IU58841. IU58841 is actually two to three times fold more potent than testosterone at binding at the receptors. So if we take a look at IU58841, IU actually has a slightly higher affinity for the androgen receptor than testosterone. Now, to compare these things, DHT is actually two to three times more potent than testosterone. So even IU58841 is not going to compete super well against the DHT. But you can see it is around the same efficiency as testosterone, while CB is way down lower. This actually puts CB0301 at the bottom of the food chain when it comes to androgen receptor affinity, making it a very less likely competitor for the androgen receptor. So to sum it up, does this mean that CB0301 is not going to work at all? No. Of course, it is going to have some effect, but keep in mind, if you're already using something like IU58841, it is going to be substantially weaker compared to this compound. So if you're considering to switching over and you're already struggling to keep your hair, I would recommend to be very gentle about it and take it easy and keep really good track of your hair loss. And if you're not using anything at this moment, you should consider to use CB since it is FDA approved. And I would say anything that is FDA approved, it is not safer, but you will have a better safety profile. Last thing you guys should know, even though we're not talking about this today, you could also consider to pair up the CB with something like finasteride. So if you're taking finasteride, you are going to inhibit your body from producing DHT. I'm not the biggest fan of finasteride though, but if you guys are using something like finasteride to block out some of the DHT production, you're going to lower a lot of the androgen receptor activation. And maybe even if you combine it with something like CB, then you're going to have two FDA approved drugs one that is going to work locally and one that is going to work systemically at each of the side of the map. Just keep in mind, guys, this is not anything that is stronger than IU58841. It is not going to do any kind of job better than IU58841 when it comes to stopping hair loss or even reversing it. Personally, I'm not going to try and use it. But if you guys want to give it a go, I suggest you just go and take a look at it at the link I've put below. Thank you guys so much for watching this. I hope this has been of some interest to some of you guys who don't want to use IU58841 or just some of you guys who are looking for another way to combat hair loss and androgen receptor activation. Also, if you're new to this channel, consider to like and subscribe the video. It helps me out a ton. And if you are already subscribed or you already liked the video, just comment below whatever you want me to take a deep dive into again. And if you want to see more about CB0301 and learn more about the pharmacodynamics, just tell me guys and I will take a deeper look into this. Currently, this has just been a short overview about the compound to see if it has in any kind of interest to you guys. Also guys, if you haven't liked and subscribed yet, please consider doing so. It helps me out a ton, keeps me going, yada yada. You know how it works. Okay guys, I'll see you in the next video. Bye.